I just got out of the shower. I just washed my dreads. I went for a run this morning, which I never do. Like, I am not a runner. And, but it feels so good, you know? Um, so I went for a run and I got super sweaty. So I figured it's time I should wash my, my scalp and the dreads. So obviously did not bring you into shower with me. These dreads have been sitting in the towel for probably 10 minutes. So I've gotten most of the water out. Hey Xander. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I've got most of the water out of the dreads, but there's still quite a bit left that I'm going to blow dry. So I wanted to show you guys how to blow dry dreads. Um, fair warning, all of these dreads that we've got collectively as a community probably are all made of different materials. So I don't know if your dread specifically can be blow dried, if you know what I mean. Some materials are super sensitive. I would assume though that your blow dryer is not crazy when it comes to the heat, so you're probably fine. I just wanna put that out there that if you have a material of dreads that you cannot get hot, then continue at your own risk. <laughs> um, but I'm going to let the dreads sit in the towel for just a little bit longer. I wish you could feel this. It's like soaking wet. Like on the top, they don't feel wet at all, but they just kind of keep dripping through the bottom. Hey, Sal. Oh my gosh. Hello from England. Welcome back. Um, yeah, so this is how I dry my dreads. You can let them just drip dry if you want to, but that just makes such a mess. Um, so I just kind of... I don't know, this makes me feel like I'm, I look like Mary. Okay, awesome, that's not ideal, um, but that's fine. That just shows you how wet that is. I don't know why it's just that side and on my boob, that's really weird. Um, I don't like that. <laughs> um, but while these dry just a little bit more, I'm actually gonna do my skincare. Um, so I got out of the shower and I did put lotion everywhere, head to toe. Um, this is the kind of lotion that I use, BT Dubs, Lubriderm. I have super, super dry skin, so I need to have some really good, really good, what is this called? Lotion. And always fragrance free. Just putting that out there. Um, so I did that on all of my skin. And so now I'm just going to go into doing my skincare for my face. Um, I guess I could have done this off camera. I know that this is like technically for dreadlock video, but whatever. It's Sunday. It's my self care day. So I think I'm going to go live every Sunday. Um, I was looking at my schedule and that just makes the most sense for me consistently to be able to stay consistent. Um, because I want you guys to just kind of know when you can hang out regularly. Um, I will probably still go live randomly throughout the week, but like every single Sunday I wanna do, not like a self-care day full on, but kind of just take you on what I'm doing that day. Um, Cause not every week I do the same stuff. Um, today I took a bath though, and that was really nice. And I. I meditated in the bath. I don't know if you guys are into meditation. I am. <laughs> I love it so much. So I was just meditating. I was in there for like an hour, it felt like. Super nice. Um, didn't got me a bubble bath soap thing to add in. So I've got bubbles on my bath and also so for Christmas, my niece, she's eight, she got me these little macaroon bath bombs because she knows that I like baking. So that's really cute. I used one, but not the best, but that's fine. I think they were from Target and they're only five bucks for four of them. So 
it has a good fragrance, but it didn't like bomb like most bath bombs do, I feel like. It just kind of dissolved. But still super cute. Love the macaroon touch to it. Okay, cool. Also, so today when I went on my run, I never run. Let me just preface that. I'm, I think I've said that already. <laughs> I'm not a runner. <laughs> um, ever since I broke my back when I was 15, I've been like afraid to run. And um, over the last couple of years, I've been like getting back to it kind of thing. And I've just, ever since I moved back to Utah, I have not exercised like at all. <laughs> Not intentionally, at least. Like, I moved every box that I own up three flights of stairs um, when I moved in. So, it's like, I've been working out. Oh my gosh, I hate that. That is just not cute. Um, anywho, it looks like I'm lactating massively, but whatever. Um, but, yeah, so I haven't intentionally worked out in months. And that's not really the lifestyle that I want to live, you know. I want to be healthier um, and work out considering I can. If I was, like, bedridden, that's one thing. But at this point of my life, I can work out, so I probably should. You know, that's kind of in my mindset. Plus, I think the winter has been getting to me a little bit. It's been so, like, dungeony feeling in my house, just, like... Sun goes down so freaking early, and I know the days are getting longer, so it's like we're looking up, but still, oh my gosh, I've I've been been affected by the seasons. And so I just needed to get outside and we I just found this. Like I've been living in this apartment for almost it's been like five months. And I just found a park that's really good, that's pretty close to my house, that I can take Olive to, to like help run her out. Um, Cause I don't think that my apartment complex has very good, like a very good space to be able to like play fetch with Olive. Olive is my dog for those of you who don't know. Um, but, so I just found this park and the park has like a track around it. So, I can walk the track and for the last week I've been finding a lot of joy by going out and walking that track um, in the well I try and do it in the mornings but lately it's just kind of been whenever I can and um, the last so that's been last week and I was walking just a mile because my thought was like this is just adding in an extra mile every day that I come up here that I wouldn't have walked before. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to go work out a super hard workout. It was more like, I'm just going to walk a little bit more than I normally would. And I have kind of fallen in love with that. And so I decided like, okay, um, I'm going to add a little bit more distance. So today... I went and did two miles, um, but I've been trying to walk less of it and do more um, running. <laughs> I've been jogging, <laughs> jogging, and um, honestly, it's kind of fun. Um, I, <laughs> I'm not, I'm just so not a runner, you know, but it's like, I'm over there running. I don't know if you guys watch Friends, the show. I'm, like, obsessed with that show. You know how Phoebe runs? She's, like, crazy running with her arms up. That's how I'm running right now. It's, like, it's so much more fun. I've, like, got my arms up to the sky, and I'm, like, looking at the clouds, and I'm, like, wow, what a beautiful day, and just running kind of thing. And I love it. <laughs> um, so I've been doing that, and I'm going to keep doing that. <laughs> that is my goal. I want to try and do two miles every morning and do that for a week. And then the following week, do like three miles. And then the week after that, then four miles. And then maybe like when I, if I actually follow through with this, I might top out at five miles. Well, five miles sounds like crazy, but I don't know. Like if I time myself and I'm up there for like an hour and a half, like however long I want to be up there kind of thing. 
because I get all like dressed up like there's it snowed here last night and um so it's like pretty chilly still but I can get all bundled up you know in the summer, I use a walking app called Zombie Run. <laughs> it tells a story periodically. You have to run from zombies. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. Zombie Run. I'll have to try that out. That sounds like really good motivation to get you to run. <laughs> if you <laughs> feel like you're being chased by zombies, that's hilarious. But yeah, so I'm not a huge runner, but I do like feeling like active and healthy. And... I've been kind of stuck in a rut with like telling myself like, okay, do yoga today. But it's like, I'll get on the ground and I'll start stretching and stuff and I'll just get distracted. And it's just like hard to do it at home all the time. Like, it's great to be able to do that when I can, but it's like, it just doesn't feel the same compared to like getting out and actually like moving quickly. I don't know. It's like, I just need to push myself a little bit to be able to feel super healthy. So that's what I did today. Um, just to recap, I guess. That's the point of me telling you that story. Um, and so after that, it's like, I definitely need to shower. And then that's kind of been one thing with the dreads that it's like, I don't really know how to navigate where it's like, I wanna exercise and be active because I'm a very athletic person, I feel like. But with the dreads, it's like, how do I exercise with these things? They're so bulky and like in the way. And so I'm kind of experimenting with that for a long time. I just kind of pretended like, oh, I don't need to exercise. That's fine. Dun -dun. <laughs> and the babe appreciates. Yes. And I take my dog with me and she runs. We run around. So she went two miles today. Denton, we went two miles, not just one, two. So she is awesome. Audrey says, yes, dreads are hard to exercise with. Um, yeah, so I've been trying to overcome that problem and kind of see like how I like my hair while I exercise and, you know, kind of just see what to do. And so far, I honestly like it down. Like if it's, if the dreads are just down and behind me, that's the best for me personally when I run. Um, but I mean, I haven't run distance, you know, like I went a total of two miles today, but I definitely wasn't running the whole time going swimming. Oh my gosh. With a cap. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Olive is dead on the, on the bed, but yeah, I can't imagine trying to put a swim cap over these dreads. That would be quite the sight to see. Um, but, sorry, I'm just so distracted by that image. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then when I do yoga, like, I don't know. I guess it's just, for me, it's just easier to let it free flow, I guess. Um, just let, keep my hair down. But I could also, like, putting it up in a ponytail, not like up, but like a low ponytail in the back looks like Marge Simpson. Oh, with the cap. Oh my gosh. Everything just like stacked up on top. That's so funny. But yeah, I've done uh, low ponytails where I just collect it all like with other dreads and just like tie it up with the dreads. And that's good too. Um, but not for like great for impact stuff. So like running, it's like it could be pulling in a weird spot. So exercising has just been one of those things. I don't know. So I want to get back into exercising though, because it's been, it's been a while. It's been enough time that I've been avoiding it. And at the beginning, when I first got the dreads, I didn't even think about it. Like when I ordered the dreads, it was not a thought in my mind how I was going to exercise. Did not care about that problem. Didn't even think about it. But then once I got the dreads and I realized, oh, it's really hard to exercise, I was just thinking like, well, I'm still testing out the dreads. I don't even know if I like, I'm gonna commit to them yet. Like, I'm not gonna really worry about it. And then my crazy summer happened and I, I was definitely not thinking about exercising at all. 
And then ever since the winter hit <laughs> or late fall, I've just been in this slump physically where it's like my diet hasn't been the best and my exercise, it's like it had gone long enough that it's like really starting to affect me. And I have POTS, so it's a just a chronic autonomic nervous system thing. And when I don't exercise, it's just like crash. Like my whole system is just like, okay, well, we're not gonna work anymore. <laughs> So I've been feeling that and it's like I haven't been able to go on hikes with my best friend and I haven't been able to like run all of that very much. So she's been feeling cooped up. It's just been like this whole domino effect, ironically, because of the dreads and the dreads are obviously worth it to still keep this problem <laughs> um, because I love the dreads. But it's like, OK, I have committed. I'm going to have the dreads in but how am I going to actually create a lifestyle that works for me with the dreads? So I've been testing how to run with dreads because I mean, before this conversation, I hadn't thought about swimming, but it seemed like running was like the biggest issue for a lot of people. It's like, how do I run with dreads? And honestly, I didn't really have an answer for them. So now I've been trying to kind of figure it out, but I don't know how you would swim with dreads, like with the cap and everything. I have no idea. Short of just like leisurely swimming, you know, where it's like you're not going for speed. It's not like a triathlon or whatever. I don't know. It's not a triathlon. Does Do you swim in a triathlon? I don't know. But basically, like if you're not competing, <laughs> swimming, whether that's against other people or yourself, then I think it's fine. But yeah, putting a swim cap on doesn't sound fun to me. It sounds funny though. I mean, <laughs> that'd be funny to watch. I don't know, is that painful? That might be painful too, because they're like really grippy, I think. So I don't know, I wasn't on the swim team. I was too self-conscious back in my day to join the swim team and like be in a bathing suit in front of everyone I went to school with. So, and our, gym, or our pool was like actually part of like a hotel pool in the town next to us. Like I was, I'm from a small place, so we did not have a lot of options. And then now as an adult, I don't know. I just, swimming is not, not my thing. I... I'm not good at cardio and I'd probably drown. I can swim, I'm a good swimmer, but like not competitively at all. <laughs> Although I think that would be awesome because it doesn't have any impact and you could do it forever. It becomes heavy, yes, I tried not to get it wet, but yeah. Yeah, I feel like just embracing it, but then it's like, it's probably a lot easier like once they're wet to like keep them in the water so they're buoyant. <laughs> I'm more of a scuba diver so I let my tank and my fins do all the work. Like, um, you know, my buoyancy control device. <laughs> my BCD. I don't know. You know what I mean? It feels me. Okay, so that was my makeup routine that I just did randomly. Um, okay, so now I'm going to blow dry my dreads. I don't know if I should change my shirt because I really don't like this wet boob. <laughs> uh, not a fan of it. Not a fan. I'll probably change it later though. You know. You know how it is. Also this brow gel, I am not a huge fan of. Um, I like brow gel, but this brand, I don't know. It was like 20 bucks or something for a tiny little thing and it like gets flaky. I don't know, but the girl at Ulta was like, this is the best one. And I'm like, you lie, <laughs> you liar, liar. I don't know you, you know. 
Okay, so also just so you know how I get my hair like this, I don't know if this is nece uh, necessary, but I put my towel over my shoulders and then pull it up like this. So I look like Mary, oh cute. And then like pull the sides and then twist. And then I fold the ends up and then keep twisting around. And then I put the elastic or the scrunchie on like that. So that's how I let them dry. Um, and it works pretty well. Most, this is the first time that it's ever really transferred over to my shirt. Um, but I didn't let them drip for very long in the shower. I just kind of got out. So this is what they look like right now. They're not super wet, but they are definitely wet. Um, but they look clean to me and they feel clean. We've got a little bit of slippage here. I've got my curls coming out right here. So I could, um, I could touch this one up and then I've got some slippage here. I should probably redo this one because I've got long curly ends and then it's like pretty far off my head. Slippage over here. I typically, my slippage comes from that very first row on the bottom in the back. I think that's just like where a lot of the weight sits. And so that's where I get most of my slippage, but everything else feels really good. Um, so I think I've got three maybe that I need to kind of touch up a little bit. Not too bad. Um, I like to do the touch ups once it's dry. Is it a microfiber towel or just a normal? This one was just a normal one, but probably microfiber would be good too. Um, Cause I know microfiber is like better for your natural hair. Okay, this is what happens to the scrunchies or to the, sorry for the chaos. <laughs> Um, these elastics, okay, this is what happens. I don't understand it, but they just, like, it's still holding the dread, but it just, like, exploded. I don't know. This one is synthetic, so it's Barbie hair, but it's safe with heat. So, um, I've got some Celtic ends. If I didn't let these dread on their own, they came just like loose ends and they're really cute. You can curl these with a curling iron or a, um, straighten them with a straightener. Like you could put heat on these. This specific Dreadful Hippie set, like any anything from Dreadful Hippie you can apply heat to. I don't know about other manufacturers, but these elastics, I cannot stress it enough. Do not buy these. <laughs> they are horrible. It's so sad. Well, okay, they're not horrible, but it's been a week. I've had these in for a week and they're exploding and falling apart. So the first set that I used, I'm just gonna put another one on. The first set that I ever used lasted the entire six weeks that I had them in. And then I just couldn't reuse them because they got like kind of gummy and a little bit they weren't moldy, they weren't rotted, like I don't really know how to describe it, but they were like decaying. <laughs> they were like definitely coming apart, but they lasted that whole six weeks. These are falling apart after one week. And this is the first time I'm getting, like this is the first time I'm showering after this, in well, I've showered. This is the first time I'm washing my dreads since installing them a week ago. So, these don't last very long. And then the problem with it is they'll just snap without you knowing and then the dread will just fall out. So when my dread fell out when I was in Hawaii, in the lobby of the, this really nice hotel and a dread is just like on the ground, it's because these elastics just break. Like it's not like the dread itself is sl like slipping out or the hair is like broken like some people in my comments think like my hair is not just breaking suddenly it's just these elastics are giving up <laughs> too soon so don't buy these um but there is like 500 in here so 
Oh, I don't know if I should keep using them. They're the only ones that I have right now that aren't massive. I really like the Goody brand, but I can't find the Goody brand in the small ones that are only small. It's like it comes in packs now. I don't know. I used to be able to find them, and now I can't, so it's kind of sad. But, okay, I'm going to blow dry my end, or, well, all of it. I don't know if it's going to be really loud for you guys. Um, I've never blow dried my hair on a live before, so fair warning, might be really loud. <laughs> Um, you can use, if you have one of these, you can use this. This is just kind of, it's for straight hair, but it kind of just keeps the water going in one direction, um, versus just kind of blowing all over the place, but it is not necessary. Typically blow, oh my gosh, <laughs> scared me. <laughs> Typically blow drying my hair doesn't take very long. Um, the biggest thing is just... I do. Oh my gosh. The biggest thing is like my natural hair is holding on to a lot of the moisture right now. And so as it falls, like as the water comes off of my natural hair, it'll just keep dripping at the ends. So even though right now on the dreads, my ends are what's really wet, I'm actually going to start and just dry my natural hair. And one thing that I like to do, I don't, I don't know if this is right or wrong, but this is just what I do. Um, I use a blow dryer like heat protectant because my my natural hair is still on there even though we're blow drying dreads my natural hair is still here so I like to use this um Kenra platinum I don't know my mother-in-law gave it to me and I love it um so I'm just gonna put this all over where my natural hair is um because I would like to still protect my natural hair from the blow dryer. Um, it is not super duper necessary, probably. Yes, Kim, that just commented, she's the one that gave me this and I love it. Um, and I'm almost out, <laughs> cause I use it so much. But yeah, um, you don't have to put a heat protectant on, I guess, but why not? Oh, I hate this wet boob. Also, Kim, I don't know what you just said because YouTube didn't let it come through. It's, it sensed it being inappropriate. Um, okay, so <laughs> the wet boob is just weird. You know, I, we're gonna go, we're gonna change my shirt. Um, you're not gonna see me change my shirt, but we're picking out a shirt right now. I'm gonna go with a huge man shirt. That sounds good to me. This is the one, it's a winner. Okay, I'm gonna change right over here, one second. I'm still here, don't worry. This is the boob shirt. Hold your horses. One second, please. Okay, I'm back. Nice. Okay, so fair warning again. Here's the real warning. I'm gonna start the blow dryer. Oh my gosh. That button, it's a loose one. <laughs> okay, so it's gonna take probably 10 minutes, um, but I don't know, we'll see. Great, right, hold on, I wanna read this one. <laughs> okay. DES says, hey girl, just had extensions yesterday, half head, and I wanted to know if you knew if it was normal that it is tight, not that much, but I'm afraid to attach them or just lift them up because of that. Okay, so when I first installed mine, I definitely put them in too tight and it was kind of painful to move them around. So like how like this one is just sitting right here. If I were to move it up, that was, oh my God, I just poked myself in the eye. That would be too painful, um, but if it's if it's just tight, I would say it's probably okay and it loosens up over a couple days. If it's tight to the point where it's uncomfortable, it's probably too tight. Um, if that's the case, you could just reinstall. I don't know if you got them done, 
Um, if you were getting them done professionally, then the person doing them might not know that it feels that tight. So you might just have to kind of speak up and say, hey, it was too tight, <laughs> fix it. Or if it's yourself, then you can try it a little bit looser. You can give it a day, but if you don't feel comfortable being able to move them around like this, if you can't do this, or if it's painful, like you should probably just for the safety of your natural hair, maybe loosen, loosen them a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So professionally, they just don't know that it's too tight. So just let them know. Is that crazy loud for you guys? Is that terrible with the blow dryer? Let me know. Um, yeah, so if you, wait, oh wait, the comment left, hold on. <laughs> It does, but I think I'm so afraid also to break the roots. Yeah, so you don't, having it too tight, ah, no. It asked if I want to stop streaming. Um, if you have them installed too tight, that is risking breakage. So it would probably be best if you could go back in and have them fix it. Um, considering it's just half your head, they might do it for free. You might suggest that they do it for free since it's too tight for you. I don't know. <laughs> Also, to that comment, yeah, if this is also your very first time having them installed in general, it's going to feel really different. Um, so maybe just give it a day or two, and if it's if it's painful at all, it should not be painful. Um, but how many breaks do you take in between between your installation? Um, what do you mean by that? When I install, I typically just go for it and just install my whole head all at once. I go live when I do that too. So sometimes it's like a three or four hour live and it's crazy. When I first started though, I would break for a day. It's like I would do partials and then sleep and have my day. And then the next day I would do the top of my head. So it can take a, a while if you let it. <laughs> What language do you speak? That's really cool. So are you Google translating everything right now? In real time? I need to learn Spanish. I just need to So cool. Can I just put this out there for you guys who are watching? The fact that these videos go around the world is like the coolest thing to me. Like in my last live, we talked about like traveling and places that I want to go to and stuff. 
and I'm just obsessed traveling in different places around the world and like different cultures and everything like that. So like the fact that you speak French and we've got Sal from England, like it's just so cool to me. So cool. I love you. I love you guys all over the world. You guys are awesome. like that the dreads are dry it really doesn't take that long to do that um it might just be also I've got such thin fine hair that without the dreads it takes me five minutes to blow dry my natural hair so I think that a good rule of thumb is like however long it takes you to dry your natural hair it'll be about that amount of time plus a couple minutes maybe so like I don't know, that took me less than 10 minutes. Um, so if it takes you like 30 minutes to blow dry your hair, it's probably gonna take 30 to 40 minutes to blow dry the dreads. How much do you sleep? How, oh, how do you sleep with them? Is it much better to attach them? So sleeping was kind of hard at the beginning, but now it's totally fine. Um, but basically what I do, I'll have all of my hair behind me and then I'll kind of like level it out a little bit on the side that I want to lay on and get it off my ear and then I'll lay flat. She sleeps with that on my face. And they're always behind me. So if Denton is behind me, they're all over his face. It's his problem, honestly. So you said typically you leave your dreads in for eight weeks. Can you go longer with them or is that not healthy? Also, how long do you wait before putting them back in? Okay, so eight weeks is kind of the max that I've ever done. Um, typically, I, I take them out before I need to just because I wanna like scratch my scalp. <laughs> so typically at about a month is when I personally like to take them out, scratch my scalp and like kind of do a, a hair treatment on my natural hair and then reinstall them. Um, you can go longer than eight weeks though, if you want to. The only thing to keep in mind that I would, the only reason that it would be bad is if you, if your natural hair grows quickly, say your hair is growing, I can probably show you on this one. If your hair is growing and you've got your dreads in for a month or two months, Eventually your dread can start to twist like this up at the root and that's where it'll start to knot up and actually start to dread. So as long as yours aren't twisting like that, like this can just keep growing and growing as long as it's not being twisted. But as soon as it starts doing this on its own and then laying like that and then twisting again and then laying like that, like that's not good for my natural hair. So at that point I would move them up. Um, for me, it's very case by case. Cause like I said, with, with the shower, I've got some slippage like this one. I wouldn't be able to like, this is after a week just because I don't know the hair that I've got down there and then maybe how I braided it. And then also like the elastics are just terrible, like all of those things. So this specific dread will start to do this if I don't move it up but I could move this one up and then leave the rest of my head kind of thing. So you can do it as needed. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Um, hey, Maya, <laughs> welcome back. Um, Xander's on here too, I think. Um, but with, oh, what was your second question? Oh, in between installs, I typically take them out one day, wash them the next, and then install them on day three. Um, but sometimes it's like you want to just take them out and put them right back in. So you could take them out, you know, shower, wash your hair, comb through it, wash the dreads, and then reinstall them that same day you want to. I just, you just told me to go, oh, um, I don't know why YouTube is retracting some of these comments, but anyways, um, 
Yeah, I've definitely been there where it's like, I don't want them to be out for too long. I want to just take them out and put them right back in. And that's totally fine. It's just however much effort you can put in is what it's going to take. Um, and then I don't fully know what you're asking about the attached or loose. I think if I were to try and figure out what you're saying, um, if you're asking like if it's better to be like close up to your scalp versus loose, kind of like this one's loose, um, the closer they are to your scalp, the longer you can go in between installs or move ups. Um, the looser they are, the more likely though that they can twist and that they can slip out completely. But comfort wise, it's kind of like this happy medium because it's more comfortable the looser they are because then it's just your normal hair with added weight. If it's close to your scalp, then it could be pulling on your scalp a little bit, but you kind of do need them close to your scalp to be able to give yourself that time so you're not just having to reinstall every single week. Now I wanted to say, if you make a hairstyle to sleep with them, do you keep, oh, okay. Yes, so when I sleep, I keep them in. Um, that would be just too crazy for me to have to take them out every single time. Maya and Xander, that is so cute. You guys have been together for one month. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you guys. Yay, happy anniversary. I hope you guys get to hang out in person um, or see each other tomorrow or something, I don't know, but cute. Um, yeah, so when I sleep, I keep them in literally just down like this. I can even, I can try and show you. Let's, let's go to my bed, one second. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is how, I have no idea how I'm gonna actually show this, but this is kind of what I'm thinking. That's my pillow. So when I sleep, if I was to be sleeping this way, not tomorrow, oh, okay, you're close enough. So if I'm sleeping on my pillow, this is how I do it. I've got all of my dreads behind me, just a mess back there, and then over here, I've got it just kind of like laid down, uh, laid down like this, like that. Easy, breezy, beautiful. So I've got all my dreads behind me and just like this. It's so comfortable. Like it's really not that big of a problem. Um, the only thing is like Denton, it gets in his way. <laughs> sometimes but i just i don't know because he's gone some of the days and so i've just gotten used to however i want to sleep and then when he comes home it's like oh they're everywhere well you know <sighs> that's how your boyfriend has them on his face. yeah yeah they're just they're just back there it's fine um yeah so i hope that helps um okay you guys the dreads are dry what else do i do oh yeah so Blow drying spray, like heat protectant, definitely. Just, if you want to protect your natural hair, if you don't care, then skip it, whatever. But the other thing that I do is I add oil. Now that all of the heat that I'm applying is done, I'm gonna add some oil. I like this Moroccan oil, but I also have that cocoa butter. But it's just like not super convenient to like use right away, because it's like solid. So I would have to like heat it up and whatever. So. I need to get one of those like tea light things, like a Scentsy like burner and just put my oil in that. <laughs> Maybe I'll go do that today, but hold on. Cause I didn't know if I had to braid them to protect them. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, so you could braid them and just, it is probably more for your comfort, less of protecting the dreads because the more rough you are with the dreads, honestly, the better the dreads become because they're dreads. <laughs> so you don't need to protect them. Um, it's just your comfort. So if you're not comfortable with having them everywhere, you could put them in a bonnet and sleep with a bonnet. Um, that's probably like if you were to buy something to, to fix the problem or to help you, I would try a bonnet. Okay, so I've got the oil all up in my hands. <laughs> And I'm going to put it in kind of where the ends to my natural hair are. Um, so you can see, I mean, I know I've got my 
hemp cord braided all the way down on some pieces, but like my natural hair is braided to about right here. So about my jawline is where my natural hair ends right now. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of put that in where the hair ends. Um, I don't wanna cause a ton of buildup on my scalp, so I'm not gonna put it into my scalp today. Um, I will start doing that probably after day three of washing, but I definitely want to keep the moisture in my hair on the ends. And then I like to just kind of put some, like since I've got some of the oil and I've got such curly natural hair, like I've got curls coming out every direction. So I, I just put a little bit of oil on those also and just kind of like rub it through. And then that kind of helps up clean up my edges a little bit. Um, I know I could embrace the curls <laughs> and go all out and like sculpt them and stuff, but that's just a lot of work for me. I don't know. Not really into it. <laughs> um, okay. And then just kind of getting the oil off my hands now at this point, just putting them in the dress. Even though my natural hair isn't all the way down here, I do like adding oil all the way down just because it makes the dreads so soft. Do you worry about fuzzies? My dreads have been, only been in two weeks and the fuzzies are crazy. Um, are you talking about things like, like this, little fuzzies? Or is there a different fuzzy issue? Because when this happens, if this is what you're talking about, this bothers me. So I just rip them off, honestly. <laughs> Um, but it doesn't do any damage to my set. I don't know about your set, but mine is locked in enough that I can just rip them off. Um, when I first got this set, if I were to do that, it could potentially start to like unravel them a little bit, but on the strands and also on the top of my skin. Ah! Sorry for the scream. I just knocked this over. Um, so... Are you talking about the frizz, like the top of your scalp, like little frizz? Because the frizz for me, it's kind of a love-hate relationship with, when it comes to frizz because when I first install them, there's no frizz and it looks great. And then as time goes on, we get more and more frizz. And I used to try and fight it, but now I've realized that the frizzier my hair is, the more natural the dreads actually look. So I embrace the frizz, um, but I'll do touch-ups as needed. So if I've got crazy, crazy frizz, but it's not quite time to do a full move up, I'll just like redo this top section and move them up if, if you're talking about the frizz. But if you're talking about the little fuzzy pieces that kind of ball up on the dreads, yeah, I just pull them out. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think that's normal though, just because the dreads are like solidifying as dreads, you know, there's going to be pieces that are kind of like confused and not sure where they should go. What really bothers me is stuff like this, where it's like, I don't know how to fix this because I can't just like twist it back together. I mean, I guess that kind of looks better, but like, it's kind of loose right here. Like you can untwist it right here versus like. You can't untwist it right here. So that kind of bothers me. I don't have a ton of these spots, but it's like, I don't really know what to do here. I could take like a crochet hook and like do that, I guess, because that's how you make dreads, but yeah, yeah, you've been ripping them off. Yeah, that's what I do. It's no big deal. It's fine. Um, okay, but I'm going to, as part of my post shower routine, I'm also going to move some of these up. Would you like to make real locks? Um, I don't want, see, okay, this just broke. I'm like, what the hell? Don't buy these elastics. <laughs> um, I don't want real dreadlocks, um, like dreading my, like taking this actual hair and dreading it. I don't want to do that. Um, I've got commitment issues. <laughs> And I just really like the ability to take them out. Um, oh my gosh, hold on. Yeah, 
I like the ability to take mine out and to like scrub my scalp. I just think that that, I would miss that too much. I made a real dread, like I dreaded one little piece of hair. Um, yeah, I dreaded one little piece of hair when I was 18. So I had one dread for about two hours. And after two hours, I panicked and I'm just like, I can't do this, I have to take it out. And so I just sat there and just combed it out and I used like a whole bottle of conditioner and I just, ever since that, it's like, I'm just so indecisive. I just can't do real dreads. I don't know. I think they look really awesome, but I think that these synthetic ones are kind of the best of two or best of both worlds kind of thing for me because I get the dreads, but I don't have to commit. <laughs> and I think also when it comes to like the difference in maintenance, like the extensions you definitely have maintenance where you have to install and all this stuff but um same as you so yeah the irreversible side yeah um but so with the extensions you definitely have maintenance where you have to install and then uninstall and wash them and all that stuff but like if you get real dreads there's still maintenance through that like you have to touch up your roots and you still have to wash them specially and everything even though we yeah I mean like you can brush out the real dreads but it's just not the same you know like it's just I don't know how hard that would be to do after years of having your dreads installed like if you wanted real dreads and you go for a few years and then you try and take them out like how long does that really take to actually brush them out because one of my other oh I forgot her name shoot um one of my subscribers that was on the live that I just did last week she was saying that she, when she brushed her dreads out it took her an entire month and she did one a day basically and it took an hour every single day so it's like it took an hour to brush out one dread also, look at how cute that curl is. Do you see that? Ah, how cute. That's another thing with these dreadlocks. Um, my natural hair, so my natural hair is super, super curly, but my entire adolescence, I straightened the shit out of my hair and ruined all my curls. Sorry, Maya, what'd you say? I would never be able to put in fake or real dreads. No dreads whatsoever. What? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, have you ever worn your dreads to a formal occasion? Yes, actually it freaked me out. So I have actually done this a few times now. Um, the first time Denton had actually gotten a new job and we were going to like the hiring dinner, like, to meet with like the CEO basically of the company, like really high up guys. And I was wearing my dreads and I met all of his new coworkers and I felt really awkward at first, but it ended up being like more of like a conversation piece. And then another time um, I went to like a conference, uh, like a, I don't even know what it was called. It's like the G3 summit. It was some kind of like business conference thing and everybody looks really, really nice and everything. And I'm just over there with my dreads. And I mean, you can dress them up. And so it's not that bad. I mean, as long as they're not like really smelly, like as long as you don't fall into the stereotype of dreadlocks, you know, like you can actually make them look really good. And Actually, now that I say that out loud, the very first real place, like fancy place that I wore these dreads to was my best friend's wedding. I wore these to the wedding and I was a bridesmaid and I was really like, oh, like, just let me know. Like, should I take my dreads out? Should I leave them in? And she was very like, you better leave them in. They are so cool. <laughs> so I wore them to a wedding. Like, I, I've kind of gotten over the fact that like, at first, it just feels weird to wear these to formal occasions, but honestly, 
it just becomes part of who you are and it's it starts to look more weird if you take them out specifically for things. I don't know if that makes sense. But locks looks like goddess to me. Yeah, like honestly, they make me feel so much more of a badass and like so much more confident. So wearing these two nice formal events, it's like I actually show up better. I feel like, I don't know. I just, I feel like it's cooler. I don't know. Yeah, and then Maya says, I like to brush my hair a lot and I like to do a lot of stuff in my hair. Yeah, so dreads probably aren't for you if you like brushing your hair a lot. Um, I don't mind brushing my hair, but my hair is just so thin and fragile and freaking short. <laughs> So the dreads are helping me grow my hair and then hopefully I can get to Maya's level where I can actually do stuff with it. <laughs> Cause right now it's just so thin and little, little hairs. But I'm gonna move this one up too cause I think it needs it. This elastic seems to be holding up though. So that's good, I guess. But. Just also keep in mind that after showers and stuff, if you need to move them up, like your hair might still be a little bit wet. And when your hair is wet, um, it's at its most fragile state. So you don't wanna like rip elastics out and just be super rough with them. But Maya says that her hair is long and thick and we can all be jealous of that. So congratulations, Maya. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but for reals, I am jealous. I love that for you, though. You are my inspiration. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, and since your real hair is thin and fragile, you didn't have any problems when you took them out. No, so when I take them out, like, I brush through. I lose some hair. This, this has been a week worth of hair over two dreads. So I'm losing a little bit of hair, but that's normal because you shed hair normally whether you've got dreads or not but when you've got dreads in your hair is locked up so that it's nowhere to go um but yeah having the thin hair I was really really worried that it was going to do some damage and like I was just saying like the whole point for me to have dreads is to grow my hair to get to Maya's level so once we're at Maya's level we will be happy with what we've got but <laughs> right now it was like super super nerve-wracking to try the dreads because i didn't want to cause any extra damage compared to what i've already done to my hair and so since putting them in i've just been really cautious about like how big my sections are and how much weight like how big the dreads are for where i'm installing them and all this stuff like i'm super super mindful of the actual of my natural hair and I haven't had any issues. My hair is actually significantly healthier. So you can't imagine how you make me feel way better because I was afraid to break my hair with extensions. Okay, I'm so glad that this helps because literally I was so afraid and I just thought like, my hair is so damaged and fragile and broken already. Like I have nothing to lose. Like that's kind of where my mindset was when I got started. And every single time I take my hair out, like it's obviously thinner than the dreads, but it feels thicker than it did before. And my ends are healthier. And like, I have bleached my hair a ton, like going really, really blonde and stuff. So it's like, I've got color damage and um, then all the heat damage. Cause I used to, honestly, I was so, arrogant as a kid I used to think that like all hair products were a scam and that it's all just like like nothing works like no matter what you try no matter what brand I thought that nothing was gonna work and so I just started using heat protectant this last year like I was so bad with it so my hair has come from very damaged and it's we're, we're coming back so Okay, Kaya says, that's where I'm at now. It's been a struggle with my hair for the last year and I'm over it. It's either dreads or shaving it all off. Yeah, try the dreads first, I think maybe. And then if you don't like the dreads, then you can take bolder actions. I went through Maya's level in my youth. 
to the level where my hormones have taken my hair right back to thin and wispy again. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. So literally it's just nice to be able to have this. Like if we can't grow it ourselves, we can buy it, right? Like you just buy dreads. And I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but I had, so Denton and I got married two and a half years ago. And for my wedding, I had legit like fancy girl extensions. And now I keep them in a Ziploc bag because I don't care about them because they are terrible. And like literally, I mean, it was really fun to have them in, like to have this long, thick hair and all that but like the maintenance for these for like real extensions versus the maintenance for the dreads are unmatched like this maintenance i had to go in i wasn't able to install these myself because they were like sewn in like it was crazy like you've got like this whole thing and it like clips it doesn't clip it's sewn in somehow like i don't even know but um so I had to go in every four to six weeks to move them up. And that costs about $200 just to move them up. And then on top of that, you have to do the color correction because like these, when you color them, they'll stay like this, but my, my natural hair gets colored like it's gonna grow out. So it's like, you have to keep coloring it a ton. And then on top of that, my hairstylist, it's not the one I was going to right now, but the one I was going to to have these installed. I don't know if it was just her experience level or if she was mad at me, I don't know, but she literally would install these so tight that I would be bleeding. Like, I'm not even exaggerating. I know that sounds like it's really dramatic, <laughs> but actual blood from these, you guys, like, I know it's probably just the stylist I went to. It's probably not a universal experience, but oh my gosh, not worth it. And then on top of that, these, this hair alone costs the same amount as my dreads. So it's like, if you're gonna put an investment into extensions, if that's the, the path you're going, you could try these. These only last for about a year max if you wear them every day kind of thing. If they're always installed, they will only last a year max. They cost the same as the initial investment and then the upkeep for these was, at, I would say on average, because $200 every install and then you've got to color it every other time kind of thing. So it's like probably on average $200 a month to have these. So it's like, if you're fine to just throw a couple grand at your hair every year, you can get these and have beautiful, long, cute hair because it definitely looks good. But if you are like me and you don't like that crazy of maintenance and you don't have the desire to throw money at your hair like that, dreadlocks are so much better because now I can install them myself. So every single time I install them compared to this, I save $200. I don't even dye my natural hair anymore because you don't even notice like it's just braids. So it's like, what's the point of having like this color of braid or like a little bit lighter of a color of braid? Like it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> so I don't even dye my natural hair. I don't need to at this point because I don't have my natural hair out of the dreads for very long. It's like one or two days max. And so at this point, these are free. Like I spent for this brand, it was, it was definitely pricey. It's like the high end dreads kind of thing. Like this whole head was like 700, 750 kind of thing. It's like this, literally the same price as that hair, those like other extensions. 750 for the hair and then now it's completely free all that i have to do is buy better freaking elastics <laughs> because these ones are terrible <laughs> but the elastics are like five bucks for like a thousand you just have to find the right brand so i just need to practice finding the right brand i don't know but like I don't know. You guys didn't necessarily ask for that kind of breakdown, but I'm very passionate about it. Like normal extensions are pretty lame. <laughs> They're pretty lame compared to the dreads. I don't know. So, oh, 
Oh, that's why I was talking about that because if we can't ever get to Maya's level of thickness and lushness of hair, like I've been trying my whole life to grow long, thick hair and I just haven't been successful yet. <laughs> and so if that day were to never come, I'll be okay because I've got these. <laughs> that's what I'm getting at. But the fact that these dreads, like my hair is so safe and protected on these dreads and these dreads are so soft. That's another thing, like not all brands are as soft as this one. So that's another thing to keep in mind because my natural hair is just braided very nicely onto these soft dreads. So then there's no damage being done as long as I'm being mindful about the weight because having such thin hair, you could really go overboard and do damage if you just put like 12 packs on your head and it's just insane. But you know, we don't do that here. <laughs> Why are the dreads as long as my hair? <laughs> Literally, I had them go, I, so typically up until two installs ago, I would just fold them in half exactly and braid them in so they would all end like right here. And then just this last two times, I'm like, I'm gonna switch it up. And now I braid them in off center. And so I've got some longer and some shorter. And I think it just adds a lot more dimension and depth to the look in general, kind of like adding layers to my hair. So <laughs> that's how they got longer. <laughs> so anyways, love that. What do they look like in the back right now? Because another thing, another slippage spot for me is that like right on the crown of my head. So we'll see how bad that is. Yeah. Super slippage, you guys. Super duper. So this one probably could be redone. Oh, but that's like my least favorite ones to do. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's definitely like, okay, yeah, I'll redo this one. This one's pretty bad. <laughs> like, look at that. It's like that far off my scalp. That far. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm going to redo this one. It needs it. But most of the time when I take a shower and I've got some slippage, it's only... Like this is the third one that I'm redoing. It's really just a small handful of dreads that you might need to redo. And I only wash my dreads once a week max, but I kind of try and go between a week and nine days. Oh, I just broke. Oh, frustrating, you guys. I am not a fan of these elastics. They're so bad if you're not using them just for a day <laughs> that's the thing it's like i feel bad about like i'm not like talking shit on this brand it's not like they don't work but they just don't work for an extended period of time like i think most people who buy these elastics need it for like their kids hair for the day <laughs> you know so it's like they're fine for that definitely but for what we need them for with the dreads for weeks it's just not working for us but like look at how long this hair is you guys what what <laughs> sorry i'm just kind of freaking out that's really cool for me this is this looks really long so that's nice <laughs> okay so i'm going to install this one, and I already feel that my sections are different sizes, but we're gonna go with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Maya. I appreciate the enthusiasm. I we're we're on our way, right? Like <laughs> it's just a matter of time. If you were to think about, or I'm gonna take you on my five-year plan. So over the next five years, this is my plan. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing the dreads and I'm hoping that after like five years, I have the opportunity to not need the dreads anymore. I think I'll still wear them 
like probably I'll put, keep them in with partials or whatever. But I'm really hoping that after like five years of wearing them, so by the time I'm 30, I, I'm really hoping that my natural hair is long enough or thick enough or healthy enough that I can, I can just wear it down. You'll get there if you try hard. <laughs> Thanks. I'm thinking positive thoughts and I'm manifesting all of the things no, but honestly, like this last year, my hair has actually changed so much. Like, I think the biggest thing is I thought that it just happens naturally, but I think my, I don't know about you because it's probably partially your genetics, but I think also it has to be way more intentional than I ever thought. Like to have good hair, it doesn't just happen, you know, like, I don't know. I've been using a lot like I've been using heat protectant and I've been using a good like hair repair shampoo and I've been using the Moroccan oil and I just today started taking collagen. So it's like, it takes effort <laughs> or it takes being intentional to actually have good hair, I think. At least for me with my genetics and where I'm at in my lifetime with my hormone levels and everything that's contributing. I think that I just have to be way more intentional than I ever thought because I always thought that it's just like, I don't know, I thought it would just happen. And then for a long time, I thought that it's never gonna happen and why even try? <laughs> and then I think also what another huge thing for me was getting off of drugs <laughs> because you know, that doesn't, doesn't, scream health you know if you're doing a lot of drugs so it's like staying away from those um definitely makes you have better hair and nails the fact that my fingernails are not like all bloody right now it's enough motivation to keep someone off of drugs that's what i'm saying so anyways sorry if that was weird and gross but it is what it is. <laughs> okay, anyways, this is my post shower routine. Um, typically it doesn't take me this long because I'm just chatting with you. But um, yeah, that's all I do. It's really not that big of a routine. It's just letting them dry in the towel for a bit, like t 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how wet they are. When I'm in the shower still, I wring them out a little bit. So I'll like loosely wrap them like this and then hold at the base and I'll twist. So like, you don't wanna just twist because that's gonna potentially put damage on your roots. So hold it and twist and get the hair out or no, <laughs> get the water out. And then, sorry, Candace says, you inspired me to remove mine after four months in. It was shocking, but I left it out till I was comfortable with my hair and putting them back in now. Thank you. Oh, yay. I'm so glad. How was four months, like how was it with being in for four months? Because I think unless this has happened to many people, were you who I was talking to about it before? Um, because it's like, it had just gone on too, too long and you were nervous. Um, because if that's the case, yes, I would love, I would love to know how it actually went for taking them out and how hard that was, or like if it just took a while to keep, yeah, okay, cool. I'm so glad that I was able to help you out with that. Like that makes me feel really good and cool about it. So, um, I'm glad that you got the courage to do that because I think honestly, like at some point it's, it would just get worse and worse. So starting over is good. Um, but dang, what was I saying? Oh, so the routine. Um, yes, in the towel, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever, blow dry, or then I use the heat protectant, then I blow dry, it takes 10 minutes max. And then um, after that, just some oil and touching up. So my hubby helped me and it took almost a week. I lost some hair, but lesson learned. Oh, I'm sorry you lost some hair. I'm really glad though that you were able to actually do that and actually like 
take action because I really do think that if you had just kept waiting, it would have just gotten worse. Um, that's also really nice. Sorry, I'm putting away my lotion. It's also really nice that your husband was able to help you. Um, that sucks that it took so long, but it's probably a good thing that it took long because otherwise you'd just be ripping your hair out. So anyways, okay, I'm really distracted. I'm gonna clean up my space <laughs> and then, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Happy Sunday, everybody. I'm gonna be working on putting some reels out. Um, I don't know if you saw my community tab before I went live. Um, some of you guys mentioned to me that you would like a notice or some kind of notification when I go live because sometimes I have no idea. It's just going to be like, oh, boom, we're going live, kind of like we did today. So if you want a notification right now, I figured out how to do emails, email notifications. So I know that that might be good for some people and not super convenient for others. So if you want the notification via email, I'll put a link in the description so that way you can sign up for the email list. And obviously I don't have the time to put out just a bunch of like random spam emails. Like I'm not going to just spam you. It's literally going to be, hey, we're going live or hey, this is happening. Like just keeping you in the loop. So if you want to be kept in the loop, join the email group list thing. I'll put a link somewhere and I will do research to figure out how I can text you. Because I do think that like for me personally, if I could get text reminders, that would actually be a lot more convenient because <laughs> I'm not checking my email all the time. So I still don't know how to do that. I kind of think that doing like a telegram kind of group would be fun, but I, I'm still in the works. So let me know in the comments if you want A, to be notified in general and B, whether email or text would be better or both. I don't know. Let me know though, because that's going to help me decide what avenue to go down because I know that it would be helpful for some people because some people were the ones who suggested it. <laughs> so anyways, thank you so much for joining me. Maya never checks her email. Okay. So Maya would, would texting like, is, do you want notifications? Okay, cool. You do. So if I, I know there's a way there, if there's a will, there's a way. Sorry, I'm pointing my finger everywhere. Okay. Ah, okay. I need to go learn how to do that because I really want that to be able to just text you guys like, Hey, I'm live or I'm going live today or whatever. I think that would be awesome. And it would give me a lot of flexibility <laughs> for when I go live. So I will figure out how to do that. But for those of you who do check your email, I will put that link in because I do already know how to do that. So <laughs> anyways, thank you so much for joining me. I'm tagging along on my post shower journey. <laughs> Okay, I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for joining. I just, uh, sorry, really quick. I am so grateful for you guys. Like literally, you guys make my life so fun. I get to do this kind of stuff with you guys. Like it's, it's just so fun. So thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Um, obviously, if you're not yet subscribed, I don't know how you're here, but if you haven't subscribed yet, go subscribe. Um, and then like everything, basically. So anyways, I'll talk to you later.